Football. Dior and Stussy, Stussy and Nike. So, as you guys are aware, um, Dior did their pre fall collection twenty or the pre yeah pre fall twenty twenty collection yesterday. Um, all the stars came out, all the glitz and glamour, all the influences, all the details. But the most striking content, the most striking news of the whole event was the fact that Sean Stussy came out of retirement to lend his creative hand uh, with Kim Jones's collection with Dior and not to obviously Kim Jones streetwear roots. So I'm really happy about Kim Jones is probably one of the most unapologetic streetwear aficionados, fans, fanatics on the fashion runway scene, apart from maybe Jun Takahashi. And maybe to a certain extent, uh, Virgil, what he's doing at Louis Vuitton. But for the most part, everyone else is sort of trying to push away their streetwear influence, their streetwear influences on their runway and trying to return back to tailoring as a weird sort of dog whistle to get all the urban people out of the scene. That's my opinion. No one else thinks that, but that's my opinion. But I like that Kim Jones being an OG streetwear fan, being somebody that's obsessed with Hiroshi Fujiwara as much as I am being a, a Gimme Five alumni, is able to kind of tap in and kind of bring these stalwarts and bring these icons of streetwear's past back into the forefront. We saw it previously with uh, what uh, Virgil did with Futura, uh, bringing back Futura to do that Michael Jackson inspired collection graffiti and stuff. And now he's doing some capsule collections with him with a Nike collaboration they've got and some other jeans apparel with uh, FL Studios. And now we're seeing Kim Jones do the same thing by bringing, um, essentially bringing um, Sean Stucci out of retirement and allowing him to kind of remind people just how much of a legend he is and why he's so influential. As you're aware, if Sean Stucci left the Stucci brand, his namesake, a while back ago, he started up um, S-Double. I'm pretty sure I put out a couple of shoes. I had one pair that I had bought before that were quite cool, but for the most part, he's been pretty quiet. I had the pleasure of actually speaking to him a couple of times when I was working at a previous company for a collaboration that we were meant to do, but it didn't come through. But that was one of my... Uh, things I look back on and really kind of proud of that I was able to reach out to him get some contacts and I was able to kind of talk to him and kind of explain my project but at the time it just didn't work out scheduling wise a complete gentleman a real top guy and somebody who essentially you know was able to kind of exit on his own terms and live an idyllic life surfing and eating coconuts so let's um, describe the whole collection there's loads of pictures up on here that I want to go through and then we're going to get to the main chunk of the situation which is of course the Jordan uh, and Stu uh, sorry the Jordan the Dior and Nike Jordan Air 1 collaboration everyone's creaming themselves over so let's go into this first one we've got um, details number one of the Air Jordan OG right a closer look at them now on the closer expansion and on the first initial um, view of what I've seen via Travis Scott's picture of them and these product shots here I have on Hypebeast, I'm going to go out flat out and say I'm not a fan of the colorway. Just not a fan. It's not for me. I'm not involved. Um, <clears throat> I think, by and large, I think the last few seasons or the last few years, we've probably seen enough Jordan 1s to probably, you know, uh, lasts of lifetime. I think Nike is sort of falling into a trap that they fell into in the early 2000s until maybe about 2010, where essentially there were no new ideas really coming out of the Nike lab. They were kind of worried of of maybe testing the waters with some new models and were instead um, hell-bent on putting out retros that for the most part weren't really hitting the mark, right? A lot of retros they put out, like the Air Max Lite, which I'll never forgive Nike for absolutely botching that retro. It was one of the most popular Nike runners that hadn't been released in a while or Air Maxes. And when they put them out, they completely botched the tooling on them, botched the uppers on them, and it made them look nothing similar to what the OGs look like. All the, all the beauty and all the emotion and all the kind of... Um, power that came from the Max light was completely devoided when they just smashed up the, the upper and made that weird banana foot uh, silhouette that we know and love from the Nike Air Stab, which is another really big letdown. So in that era, they just we regurgitating Jordans. That was a kind of era where we got Jordans coming out of the woodwork in every sort of way. And I remember Jordan brand being a little bit dismissive of the fact, saying that they were only going to put out a certain amount. And of course, Nike's bottom line is the most important thing. So they end up, end up just cranking up the machine, churning out loads of Jordans. And now we've got inundated with Jordan 1s all over the place. And now the most iconic Jordan in the Jordan 1 is not special anymore. The value that the Jordan 1 once had, the reason why a lot of these influencers back in the day some of the people that everyone followed that i don't really give a toss about that were going out and buying og jordan ones and making them really expensive and making them really popular now that whole appeal is gone why would you buy a nike a jordan a jordan one from 90s 80s now just you know I, unless you just wanted to do it for your own for your own kind of vanity for the most part you can get a similar kind of look with another jordan coming out you know every other month so they've sort of devalued the item itself so that um, on that case, just looking at it, I'm kind of tired of it. I think the colorway itself, I'm a bit disappointed. It being Kim Jones too. Kim Jones is a big Jordan 1 aficionado. If you've ever read interviews of his, when he's talking about Hiroshi or you're talking about his Turner collection, he's always wearing a pair of Jordan 1s for the most part, always a pair of Nikes really for the most part. 
based on his on his close connection with the people at Nike, with people like Fraser Cook and stuff. But it's a real disappointing colorway, I think, overall. Again, it ties in a lot with his collection, which we'll check out later. But I think as a colorway, I think as a design, he could have done a lot more with it. It's a bit underwhelming. And again, something that I think would only sell just because of the names that are attached to it and the fact that it's a Dior uh, Jordan 1. Now, there is some nods to the fact that it's taking inspiration from the kind of bootleg Air Force One era that we used to see back in the day where people were kind of taking uh, authentic Gucci, um, Louis Vuitton, Fendi fabric and sort of putting those on the side of the swoosh. I'm sure people are familiar with Meteor Sports doing the same sort of thing in the UK and other places probably in the US doing it. So there's, I like that kind of nod on it. But as an overall shoe, I think that probably would have worked out better if it was completely white and just taking inspiration from the kind of white and white Air Force Ones with the sort of, um, the edit on the swoosh with the fabric on it. But as it is, this sort of like gray teal kind of upper, doesn't, I'm just not a fan of looking at the pictures here. And again, it's just initial impressions. I'm just not a fan of it. I just don't think it looks that good. Um, you've got obviously the Jordan, uh, the Air Dior emblem on the side with the wings on it, which is a good little nod there. It's got metal uh, tips on the laces, which is a good little detail. I like the piping, actually. That's the, that's the thing I do like. The piping around the Swish is quite interesting. Maybe the fact that they've been launched in Miami or Basel might make some sense, or during that season might make this reason why there's maybe this colorway looks this way. I like the piping around the Swish I mentioned before. That looks quite cool. But overall, as a collaboration, it's got Miami on the tag on the inside. And of course, the IC translucent sole at the bottom written with Dior. So again, I think for the flossy boys, the kind of dudes that wear Jordan 6 influence with skinny jeans with their knees out and leather jackets, I think this is probably perfect for you if you're the kind of person that sits on lounge chairs and uh, members only clubs or in like, you know, One Oak and stuff and you want to have your feet up. I think that's quite good. It's sort of like a Jordan Louboutin in that respect. But I think for a sneaker head as a colorway, I'm a bit underwhelmed. I think if you like this colorway and you hate the sneakers and stuff, Jordan 1, there's something wrong with you. I think the sneakers and stuff, Jordan 1 colorway is better than this. Personally, I would say my, my own humble opinion. I'm not sure if, if you guys agree with it. Let me see if I can quickly get it up here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Sneakers and stuff, Jordan 1. Of course, as a story, the Jordan 1 and Dior and Kim Jones is probably a lot more. There's a lot more to that story than the, the, what we're seeing with this now. But I don't know, man. I think this colorway works a lot better, in my opinion, personally. Where is it? It's a, I definitely saw it the other day. Sneakers and stuff, Air Jordan 1. They had a collaboration. It's just, it's just come out recently. I'm pretty sure I'm seeing images here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, here we go. This shoe. I think this shoe is far, far superior to, than the than what we're seeing here from Dior. So I'll get up on the screen. This this shoe here. This is far superior than the Dior, in my opinion, colorway wise. Again, both probably as interesting as they're both probably as uninteresting as each other. But I think if you're gonna go for that kind of white upper shoe, I like the fact that if you look at this kind of shoe, the sneakers and stuff shoe specifically, if you zoom in a little bit. It's uh, essentially got those sealed seams on the edges and the toe box. It's sort of like a tumbled level of the new buck toe box there in the front, which looks beautiful. And you're sure they're going to age and wear really nicely. And again, just as an upper choice in terms of the white and gray with the pop of the red at the top, it reminds a lot of the kind of OG um, kind of Nike basketball shoes that weren't Jordans. I had a pair of them before. I think they called it Tax or something. I forgot the name of them, but they kind of remind me of that sort of colorway. So again, I prefer these to the Dior ones. But going back to the Dior, again, they've got the piping around the switch, which is probably the best bit about it. Um, and again, I'm just not that enamored with them. And I think they could have, I think you could have came across a lot harder with them. Again, cool details on it. The fact that they've got Dior on the wings on the side. They've also got Dior written on the tip of the laces. And I think if you zoom in on the tongue here, there's also a uh, Dior uh, motif embellished all over the foam bit of the tongue there so that's pretty cool to check out right so that looks amazing um for people that want that kind of shoe it's supposed to be going to be priced at like two thousand dollars or some stuff um or something like that so you know that rules out a whole chunk of people because you know straight away if it's going to be priced at that amount that means the retail price is going to be ext extremely high now i'm not sure why they're priced that high i'm not sure it's because they're using the dior fabric which is you know quite high cost or i'm not sure because it's just the name because I, I can't remember a shoe that's cost that much that was available for retail even the Supreme Louis Vuitton trainers, how much did they cost? And they were, yeah, that's the thing. They were Supreme, they were Supreme and Louis Vuitton. So they were Louis Vuitton tooling shoes, right? The kind of chunky um orthopedic sort of looking trainers, right? They were a little bit they were sup they were Louis Vuitton inline trainers. So I'm not sure why these cost so much. That's the troubling part of it. Um but it says the following here from Hypebeast, just after the Nike officially unveiled as Jordan Air Brat Air Jordan 1 
OG Calibration with Dior. We now have a take a closer look in question. Shoney Miami is part of the Dior 4 Winter Pre 4 collection. The Dior A Jordan 1 OG takes classic 1985 silhouette and brings it to new heights just in time for the A Jordan's 35th anniversary. Okay, that's probably why they're doing it then. 35th anniversary. The sneak utilizes Dior's expertise in leather goods and blends them with the Nike Sports Athletic. Okay, so it's Dior up. So it's Dior leather. The uppers feature one of Dior's first shades, Dior Grey, with the 1947 painted across number of panels and a remixed Dior Jumpman wing logo and a co-branded Air Jordan tongue and a Nike swoosh. Okay, that makes sense. Love mixing. I love mixing together different worlds, different brands. So Jordan brand and Dior are both em emblematic of absolute excellence in their fields. To bring them together in this special collaboration is to propose something exciting and truly new. So it's Kim Jones, assistant director of Dior Men. So cool. That looks fairly cool, I think, in that regard. Again, not for me. I'm not a fan of them at all. Not because I won't be able to get a pair, but I just think as a colorway, they're a bit boring. Um, so we move on from there and we take a look at the collection because that's quite interesting, I thought. Ba, 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 ba. We see some other images, of course, of the Jordans. They're, they're everywhere, innit? Two pieces, of, two stories from Hypebeast about the same trainer. Incredible, innit? They do this quite often, actually. Even with Supreme, they'll just break down every bit of items, outwear, accessories, just to get the click rates for innit? You gotta rate Hypebeast, man. They know, they know what they're doing when it comes to getting the clicks on their site. So let's get this um, image up here. Another headline from Hypebeast Dior and Jordan brand unveil long awaited Air Jordan 1 High OG collabo. Now, looking at them on foot, they do look a lot better. So, if I have to take something back, I'll say initial reactions, they do look a lot better with them on foot. But still, I think they're entirely boring. I don't think they're worth the hassle to really go out and get a pair. The story about them is obviously quite unique. The fact that, you know, Kim Jones is a big, avid, is an avid streetwear fan, uh, Jordan 1 aficionado. What he said previously in a statement about the two brands being experts in their field and joining together is incredible. But the most interesting part of it I like is the socks. I think the socks are pretty cool. Um, really cool socks. A great length for a pair of um, Air Jordan highs with obviously the Dior written in the sort of uh, quintessential Sean Stucci font. I quite like the look of those. I think the, the socks look really interesting. I wonder what they're going to retail for. The cashmere socks are some loud. But yeah, the, the actual official product shots make the shoe look a lot better. But still, I don't think they're worth the hassle and they're a bit underwhelming for all the hype that's been caused around them. Um, so here's a Jordan brand uh, VP of design, Martin Lotti said the following, every collaboration we do starts from a genuine connection and desire to expand and dimension of each brand through the creativity and design innovation. Now they always say that, innit? Every collaboration we do is a friendship, we're connected, it's about real appreciation, blah, 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 blah. But as a, when are they ever going to come out and say, look, we're just doing it for a cash grab. He's Kim Jones. He's the head of Dior. We're Jordan Brand. We're dying on our feet. We need another spruce up. You know, when are they ever going to say, never going to say that. So these, this idea that every collaboration is some sort of unique collaboration between two people who happen to cross paths at the same gallery, who happen to be at the same bar is nonsense. We know that for the most part, most of these individuals, these high companies, have been in their jobs for years, maybe decades. So if you hang around for long enough and you you know move positions here and there, you can exchange favors from friends to friends. And it's also quite nice if you actually have a friend. Imagine if this uh, Martin Lotti guy is actually a mate of of Kim Jones, who used to work at you know X brand, and now he's at Jordan brand, and suddenly now this collaboration opens up again. That's quite cool because I'm pretty sure. Whatever Fraser Cook handles in terms of his marketing side is separate from Jordan Brand. They probably don't intermingle. Probably Fraser Cook can lend a good ear or a good introduction to Kim Jones. But Kim Jones obviously needs his own people to kind of give him the stamp of approval. So the fact that it got approved is sick. But this idea that this is a special thing is a bit bizarre. Every collaboration text basically like this isn't it but anyway it continues um, our partnership with maison dior will offer a new look into a style of basketball it's a new look though really and blend a high-end streetwear with luxury fashion I'm, I'm glad i said streetwear in the copy and didn't try and shy away from it that's pretty cool um we'll pay homage to both brands rich iconography and draw inspiration from our heritage but it's, hmm, it's a bit bland though isn't it like i said i'm not really a big fan of it i think it's a little bit um yeah the video looks cool though again i'm just not a fan of it again um, you know what I hate also? I hate the fact that they didn't relace the shoe for the product shots. It's one of my pet peeves when it comes to product shots. You just leave the laces like that. Like, you know laces where you see how a shoe might be out on size, just like put out there with no love or support. If I go to like a sneaker store, I want to see the shoes laced properly. I want to see them, you know, the, the laces go over, under, over, under, that way up, right? That way, like a V-shape. Um, I also want to see, you know, nice and packed and full, but not squeezed tight like the way Marquise Brownlee squeezes the Jordan 1s. Don't strangle them like that. You know, give them a bit of, give them a bit of space. And just generally make them look like, you know, how they look like on my feet. That's the one thing. It would be nice if the actual jewel hang tag thing was real sterling silver. 
that would that, that would be nuts. I'm, I'm not sure if it is, and you could actually put that on your chain or something. That would be crazy. And it had maybe the um, Kim Jones signature with Dior, and maybe it might have said the number and the serial code of it. That would be sick. That would be sick. But yeah, um, a bit average, isn't it? I'm not really that bothered about him. I, I don't know what you guys think about it, but I'm not that bothered about it. You can check out the video yourself on Kim Jones' Instagram.